Good morning and welcome to church this morning. We're so glad that you could join us. Um, why don't you just stand to your feet if you can where you are and join us as we sing Glorious Day.
declare right now that your presence is to come and wrap yourselves around each and every one of us in our homes, Lord Jesus. We might not be allowed to gather together, Lord God, but I just thank you, Lord, that through this stream right now, Lord God, I just thank you that each home 
feels your presence, Jesus. Every device that's watching you, Lord, I just thank you for your love to flow out of that device, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we want heaven to come, Lord God, every, every place, Lord God, every home, Lord, every being to feel your presence, Jesus. Heaven on earth, Lord God, that's what our desire is, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Heaven come. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Heaven come, Lord. On earth as it is in heaven, Jesus. That's our desire, Lord. In heaven, there's no sickness, Lord. There's no, no pain. There's no anguish, Lord. That's what we want here on earth, Lord God. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. You're so awesome, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love your presence, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for today's meeting, Lord God. Lord, I just pray that your word will be manifest in our lives, Lord God. As Grandma or Lois, Lord, is preaching today, Lord God, I know she's got a word from the, from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, that as she preaches, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that she's out of her comfort zone, Lord. But I just thank you, Lord, that even though uh, she's preaching just to one person, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord, that uh, the Word will pierce our um, our being, Lord God, that we will know how good you are, Lord God, that the the Holy Spirit is is alive and is working today, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for, for that. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It's awesome. Well, today we have a bit of a um, different service, a three-day lockdown. So we uh, did a little quick scrambling in the team. Just like to thank everyone for, for scrambling on a, on a Friday afternoon to coming um, to quickly put this together for you guys. Um, it's really, really cool how quickly, uh, as, as a church, we're able to quickly pivot and to do these sort of things. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate it. So we just want to welcome you guys. Uh, we're so glad that you decided to join us this morning. Um, Mum and Dad are actually away on holidays, so they're living it up in the sun on the surface paradise at the moment. So hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. I uh, hope you're having fun. Uh, Sunday school is coming up in two weeks, so who's excited for that? So depending on how we're going, at the moment there's no church today, but uh, Sunday school is due to return in two weeks on the 24th, uh, which is awesome. Uh, next week we're going to be honouring Grandma, who is turning 80, if you can believe it. I think she uh, looks more like a 60-year-old. Hey, Grandma. Um, she's, she's so much life and she's... Uh, it's just great that we'll be able to come and honour her next Sunday. Uh, and also, uh, Dad uh, is turning 60. So, milestone birthdays. Probably looks more 40, 42-ish, I think. Uh, my birthday's coming up next month, Dad. Um, but yeah, so we will be having a cake if we're allowed to. And... Um, we're going to share some thoughts on their lives and what they've done over this time uh, as they've been in the ministry. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful morning and we really want to welcome you guys to, to come if we're allowed to next week. Um, that'll be awesome. Uh, we also, uh, yeah, that's about all I have coming up this week, but we're not sure. Hopefully it's all on in pencil. We don't put anything in pen these days, we've learned. Uh, so we're just keeping it in pencil. But... Um, we're going to also come around communion right now uh, as we're um, in this time just before. So I'm just going to pray. We're just going to pray and just ask the Lord to bless us as this lockdown has quickly snuck upon us. We just thank the Lord that uh, this virus won't get out, Lord God, and that it will um, be, main be contained this time, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. But yeah, as we come around the cup, we just think about how awesome God is that He made a way for us to be able to um, to have our healing, um, have no sickness or disease. He nailed that, destroyed it, and it paid the way for us uh, as He was scourged on that whipping post. And the blood which represents His, uh, the cup which represents His blood that was poured out for us. Thank you. 
Um, we just thank you for that, Jesus. Lord, we just, we'll just come and pray right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just come before your communion table right now, Lord God, and we just pray for our, our cities, all these these council areas that are in lockdown right now. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are greater than any sickness or disease, that you have paid the price, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your, your healing power, Lord God, to come across our our great state, Lord God, and across this nation, Lord. And we just speak to this COVID-19 to be dead and buried, Lord. We don't want to repeat a 2020, Lord, but we want 2021 to be a wave of refreshing, Lord God, of health and wealthness, health and wealth, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, for your body, which was beaten for us, Lord God, that you have paid the ultimate price for every sickness and disease, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. You may partake of the bread. Thank you, Lord. And for your the cup, Lord, which represents your blood. We thank you, Lord, that every sin we've committed, past, present, and future, Lord God, that you have made atonement for us, Jesus. And Lord, we just come before you, Lord God, and we reflect on our week, Lord God. And we just come before you, Lord God, and we just ask for forgiveness for the areas, Lord, that we've fallen short this week and we've, the areas we've gone too far, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord you may partake. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is so good. Uh, we have a, an awesome speaker for you today, uh, Grandma or Lois. So please make Grandma welcome this morning. Morning, everybody. I'm just so happy to be able to share with you today. Right now it's Friday afternoon and because of the lockdown we've had to pre-record this. So this is a whole new experience for me. But anyway, we're going to see how we go. I'm just telling them the subject I'm going to talk to you about is to be filled with the Spirit. And John 4.24 says that God is a Spirit and they that worship Him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we've been hearing a lot about the truth, but you know what really brings the truth alive is the Spirit of God moving on it. And I, so I'm just going to give a little background first for some of the people that don't know much about the Holy Spirit and just to give a little bit of background so that you can catch up on what I'm talking about. I'm going back to when Jesus was going. He had... Um, it got close, he was, knew he was at the end of his ministry, and he was leaving, and he talked to the people in John 16, 7, and he said, nevertheless, I, I tell you it is expedient. Expedient, in case you know what that, don't know what that means, it means profitable, or it's good, it's for your advantage. I go away. If I do not go away, the comforter, which, which is... Comforter is, is in the Greek, means intercessor, strengthener, consoler, the advocate. He will not come, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. What Jesus is saying here is he was limited as a human being, and he could only be in one place at a time. And so he said, I have to go so that I can send the Holy Spirit, because when the Holy Spirit comes, he will dwell with us, and he will be in us as well. And when you think about that, that is amazing. And when he says that, the Holy Spirit will come and he's in us. And he can be in us and he is all around the world at the same time. And, he can, and so he's, everything that he was to Jesus, he is to us all the time. And those of you that don't understand what the Holy Spirit is, I want to say that it's, he's, the Holy Spirit is a person and he's actually part of the Trinity. Um, you say, I've always found it hard to explain what the Trinity is. It's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But really, when you think about it, you just have to go to your kitchen, and I'm sure you do it every day. You go to the kitchen, and you get fridge. Go to the fridge, and you get some ice out. Or you might go to the tap and get some water out of the tap. Or you might go to the electric jug, have it boil, and get some steam. It's all H2O, it's all water, but all in different forms. And so the Holy Spirit is just as much God as what Jesus is God. 
So we see that he says he's going to send him and he will be in us. And so when Jesus ascended 40 days later, after his crucifixion, he told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait till they'd be endued with power from on high. Endued just means clothed. Can you imagine that? Jesus is there and he's telling you to go and wait till you're being endued on power on high. They wait four to, uh, 10 days for this to happen. They didn't know how long they were going to wait. They didn't know exactly what was going to come. And I think it's interesting that first of all, he talked about a comforter because he knew, this is before he died, he knew that they were going to be sad and he was trying to encourage them that he wouldn't leave them on their own, but he would actually give them someone in this place that would comfort them. But then in Acts 1, when he talks about um, 10 days afterwards, sorry, after, sorry, 10 days after the crucifixion, no, sorry, he, 10 day, he, he, he talks to them and he says, but just before he leaves, just before he's ascended, and he says, but you shall receive power, power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. And power means very similar, it's dunamis in the Greek, and it means dynamite. That's the sort of power that God will give us if we believe in him. And, and he receives it and, and we receive this. And then he goes on to say, I, I just want you to imagine a little bit what would it be like if you had been told that, you'd been told to go and wait in Jerusalem and you had to wait for 10 days and you didn't know what was happening, you didn't know what was coming and you didn't know when it was going to happen. And then, and then it, the Bible says that there were 500 people that got that command but only 120 people were left. I wonder if I'd have been left or I wonder if you would have been. But anyway, these people waited and as they were waiting, um, it says in Acts 2 that in, on the day of Pentecost, now what does that mean, the day of Pentecost? It's uh, when it was fully come. It's about the feasts of the Lord and I'm just very briefly here, that when Jesus died on the cross, the feast that the people were celebrating was the feast of Passover. And as the lamb was being slain, at the, exactly the same time, our lamb of God was dying on the cross and he died for our sins, just as the lambs were killed for their sins. But Jesus', sin, Jesus takes, it, takes all the sin away where the others just covered it. So this was that they waited. God has timing, that's what I want to see, and he's never in a hurry, I find. But he has specific times. And this Bible says in Acts 2, 4, that as they were waiting and this day of Pentecost was coming, they were all with one accord. That means they all had the same heart. They're all in the same place. And suddenly, and I want you to know there's lots of suddenlies in God, and I believe we're about to have another suddenly very quickly. And there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. The Amplified says that it's as a violent tempest blast and it filled the house where they were sitting. Wow, imagine being there. They didn't expect that. Suddenly, just as they were all sitting there, the Bible said they were praising and worshiping God, and suddenly, this tremendous noise, it would be like a, a cyclone or something hitting, and it was a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house, and it landed on each one of them, it filled the whole house, and it, they were all the people that were there, were, um, they're sorry, they've gone on to say that there appeared clothed in tongues of fire. John the Baptist had said before this, John the Baptist had said, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. I think we all need some Holy Ghost and fire in our bellies. And this is what happened on that day. And it was like a tongue of fire on their head. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want you to imagine what that would have been like to be there. And how long do you think that meeting went on for? I've thought about it and I thought, was it a five minute thing or did it go on? Um, just what sort of a meeting was it? But it must have been amazing. And Jews from every nation, that, I'll tell you it was a long time because Jews from every nation were there, they'd all come from all around the world to, to celebrate the feast. And the word spread quickly around and multitudes gathered. The Bible says multitudes gathered. 
as they came and they were all confounded. They were all wondering what the heck is going on here. They couldn't believe it. And uh, as they listened, they found that everybody there was speaking in the tongue, was speaking in the language that, or, or a dialect from their hometown. They found that every one of them that was there, somebody was speaking in that, that they could really understand it. And they were praising and they were blessing the Lord and talking about the good works that Jesus has done. And some people sat there and they were amazed and they marveled, but other people mocked and said, these people are drunk. And I imagine on the Feast of Day of Pentecost, they waved the, sheep, the wheat before the Lord. And I don't know what these drunk men were doing, but I sort of think if they thought they were drunk, that maybe they were staggering around a little bit and they were waving before the Lord and they were fulfilling the feast. And I want to say just on the side that the next feast that is going to be fulfilled, has never been fulfilled, is the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's what we're going to celebrate very soon. God has never fulfilled that in the church, but that's what's coming very soon, I believe. When we, Alice, Debbie and I were in India, we had an amazing experience where we were moving around the south of India and we were taking women's conferences everywhere. And we were talking about the Holy Spirit and we made an altar call and lots of people came forward to receive the Holy Spirit. And we prayed for them and, and then we watched and we don't know whether they're speaking in tongues or not because they all, or they were, none of them were, they were all speaking their own language and we didn't understand it anyway. But in this, all of a sudden, in the middle of it all, we heard a lady talking and she was saying, Lord, I love you so much. I've loved you for so long. And it sort of ran out because it, all the noise in the kerfuffle, but there was a noise that we could understand. And later on, we found out that this little woman had gone up to the pastor after the meeting and said, these people have helped me so much. I just wish I could talk in English and thank them. So she never knew what a blessing she'd been. We also had the same experience with a man. So they were speaking in these languages um, but people and people recognised that these men all spoke Galilean. They saw that and they couldn't believe it, what was happening. And Peter gets up and preaches. Now, Peter was very ignorant and unlearned, the Bible says. He had denied the Lord because of his fear. And he preached so powerfully after this experience that 3,000 people were added to the church in one day. So that's a little bit of an indication of what size the multitude that came. So I'm saying I think that they were talking in tongues and this meeting went on for quite a while. And what was happening? As they were talking in tongues, they were getting more and more filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's why Peter was able to get up. And he took scriptures from the Old Testament and he brought them and said, this is what the Old Testament says. And that's what the apostles did. They took scriptures from the Old Testament and they got quickened by the Holy Ghost and they brought it into something for today. And that's what they're called to do. So why did God have them to speak in tongues? It's really quite an amazing miracle. I believe it's because the more they spoke in tongues, the more that they, the Holy Spirit got in them, the more they got used to it, the more they were able to just lean on Him and, and the more they were able to be powerful as they spoke and shared what had happened. The Bible does say that you can speak in tongues of men and of angels. And after this amazing meeting with 3,000 people saved, Peter gets up and he says, Repent, be baptised, and you shall re receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to tell you today. If you're a Christian, you need to have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's for you. The Bible says it's for you, for your children, and them that are afar off. And we're afar off from when, G when this actually happened 2,000 years ago. And so God says you can have it. And he also says it's a gift. He gives it to you. You don't have to earn it. He says if you will just repent, be baptised, this gift is for you. And I would love to see the whole church have this gift. So as we go through the book of Acts, we see many examples of people being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. 
And I want to say that I don't think we have ever really fully understood the value of speaking in tongues and what an amazing gift it is. I think it's more powerful and we all need it much more than we've realised. And we've sort of, I don't know how long you've, since you've spoken in tongues, maybe you do it regularly, but I think it's something that we need to see how powerful it is because it's the Spirit speaking through us and we're going to talk about that. 1 Corinthians 14 2 says, But he that speaks in an unknown tongue is not speaking to men but to God. Did you hear that? When you speak to God, speak in an unknown tongue, you are speaking directly to God. You've got a hotline to heaven. And it says that he that, also in verse 4, it says that he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. And that literally means to be a house builder. He builds a house. He builds a place for the Holy Spirit. He gets strengthened. He gets encouraged. He builds up on the inside. It also says it improves us to be more moral. And, and Paul said when he wrote this book, he said, and I would that you all spoke with tongues. So you cannot say to people, as some people do, oh, tongues is not for today. Paul said, I want everybody to speak with tongues, and I want to too. You know, it's interesting that science now, science is saying that they did tests, and they took tests of people's brains. Now, when we talk, if you could look through whatever they use, they can look into your brain, the x-ray machines, and they can see little lights going off as your brain ticks over. But when you speak in tongues, there's no activity on the brain at all. Isn't that amazing? Because it's not that you're speaking with the understanding, but it's because you're speaking from your spirit. Your spirit is, is connecting with God's spirit. And in Romans 8.26, there's a lot of scriptures here, but I want to sort of lay a foundation. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we don't know what to pray for. But as we should, but the Spirit makes intercessions with groanings, longings, unspeakable yearnings and sighing. And he knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for saints according to the will of God. I just want to explain that to you. He is saying, sometimes we don't know how to pray. There's something going on, a situation, or something we're feeling and we don't really know how to pray. So he says, when we pray in the Spirit, the Spirit knows exactly what's going on and he makes intercessions. And sometimes there's a, a longing or something in your heart and you just don't know how to even express it and how to say to God what you, what you want to say. And so he gives us a tongue and the Holy Spirit does it for us. And you know something, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you always pray according to the will of God. Sometimes in our own, in our own life we, we want this and we want that, and sometimes it's not the will of God for us to have it because He knows what's best for us. But if you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are always praying to the will of God. Okay, there's a text in Ephesians 5, 18, 19, and it says... Don't be drunk with new wine, but filled with the Spirit. And that's what we've titled our message today, be filled with the Spirit. He says, how do you do that? He says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. He wants us to build ourselves up, as we've been talking about, and to sing how do we do it? Be filled with the Spirit by speaking to yourselves, by singing psalms and hymns. I think that would include um, choruses and the songs that we sing. But then he also says there, if you'd notice, and spiritual songs. I'm going to come back to that. And, and, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. In other words, keep that contact with God and keep in touch with Him. And this is how we do it. And then let's, I just want to look at then at, at 1 Corinthians 14, 15. It's only quickly. But it says, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding. What's he saying? 
I will pray with the Spirit when I don't understand and I can pray when I do understand. I can sing with the Spirit when I don't, when I don't understand. I love worshipping and starting to sing in the Spirit when you're worshipping, speaking in tongues to the Lord. I find that that is so amazing that we get to do that, just to sing and to worship Him. And we don't know sometimes what we're even singing about or what worship we're giving Him. But it builds us up as we do it. But also we know that God is communicating through us. His, our Spirit and the Holy Spirit are joining together and we are doing what God wants us to do. And we are praying for the things that God wants us to pray for. And we are praising Him as He wants to be prayed for. You know, you read the Bible and you read about people like Peter, Stephen, and the Bible says that they came out and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And we see that they spoke out and they did miracles and they worked signs and wonders. Why did they be able to do that? I believe it was because they were filled with the Spirit. I think of Paul. He would be probably the most amazing man that's ever lived spiritually. He wrote most of the Bible, of the New Testament that is. And he said, I'm glad that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So he was a man who spoke in tongues more than anyone else. But look at the revelation he had. Look at the power of God that he had in his life. The miracles and the things that happened. So that as you read the scripture, you'll find that the people... The people and the apostles, so they had miracles, but they were tongue talkers as well. And since I've been, since I've been learning to use the phone, I'm not very good at it yet, but I've, I've been watching online a lot, and I have heard two different men who have got mightily used of God, mighty in the gifts of the Spirit, mighty in prophetic, and I've heard them both say different stories, but pretty well the same story. They said... They have found they've been comfortable working in the ministry, being happy with what they're doing, feeling really good in it. And then suddenly they found themselves in an uncomfortable situation that they didn't want to be in and they didn't think that they should be in. And as they've done that, they've said, Lord, they cried out to the Lord and they said, Lord, what am I doing here? I don't want to be here. I'm comfortable where I was. I want to do where I was. And God says to them, you have prayed, every time you pray, you have prayed for, your, for, 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 for this very thing that you're doing right now. And so he said, Lord, they said, Lord, we never prayed. We don't remember praying. And he said, every time you prayed in tongues, you prayed for this. And so God can lead you into your destiny, I believe, from that. God can lead you into your destiny as we pray in tongues. We don't know what, how many of you folk know what God has got? I hear it all the time. I don't know what God wants me to do. Where do I fit into the body of Christ? What is my ministry? Here's something that we can do to find out. Let's start praying in tongues and then let the Spirit of God lead us to a place might be a place you never even thought of, far above what you ever thought of, but God can lead you and, you, and he can show you what your ministry is. But the but people talking, uh, there's people today on, online that are, you know that that are being really used, and they are they are talking in tongues for hours. I can't believe it. I read it, and and they are t talking to. God in tongues for hours, two and three hours at a time. They just been talking to the God. But guess what? They are filled with the Spirit. They are walking in the Spirit. They are led by the Spirit. And they are doing mighty things for God. And they minister in that spiritual realm. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.4, And my speech comes to you not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. And I believe we're moving into an area where God wants each one of us to be able to share the Word with people, talk to them, but not only talk to them, but give a demonstration, pray for them when they're sick, um, have a word of knowledge for them, 
pray for them and see the miraculous working power. I think that because of the world we live in, people are slow to even believe that there is a God. But we need to show them that there is a God. And one of the ways we can show them is by the miracles and things that got run through us. And this is for everybody. It's not just for the five-fold ministry, the one you see on the platform. This promise is for everyone. So I don't know how many of you are talking in tongues, but I want to see a whole lot more after this. I want to see a lot more vessels fill up. Alistair used to say years ago that some people... Um, they're just like Swiss cheese with lots of holes and, and the Holy Ghost sort of slips out a bit. And I think, you know, we've got to make sure that we keep topping up. If you read in the Bible, there are many infillings. You know, you don't just get filled once, but there's more and more infillings. When the tap gets a bit low, you go and you talk in tongues and you fill up a whole lot more. And God wants us to learn more and more to do this. And Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. He talked in tongues more than anyone else. And that's where he came, came from. Ron was talking last week about Smith Wigglesworth, how we used to get in the train. And he'd get in the train and people would be suddenly on the carriage and sit down and suddenly people would be crying out with conviction. And they'd feel the presence of God. And how did that happen? I believe that Smith Wigglesworth was so full of the Holy Ghost that that overflowed from him. You know, they used to talk about we need a full gospel, but I believe we need an overflowing gospel so that we are so full of the Holy Ghost that people come near us and we overflow onto them. They feel the presence. They want to be uh, near you because of the presence of God and they want to know that God is real and we can pass that presence on to other people. Peter's shadow healed the sick. I think it's the same thing. The Bible talks about how he walked up the streets and people put, laid out on the streets and the shadow healed the sick. What was happening? He was so full of the Holy Spirit, it was dripping out for others too and people were getting healed by the, by the dozens. Bill Johnson, I remember him talking about it, saying he went into a shop one day and he was browsing around having a look, I think it was a hardware shop, and a lady came past him, a young lady. She just passed him in the aisle and suddenly she fell over and she got up all apologising, saying, well, I don't know what happened. I was just walking along. I never tripped on anything. I don't know what happened. Suddenly I was on the floor and he said, he just he said, I just looked at him and thought, I've spilled over. <laughs> Amazing. And then I want to tell you about Amy Semple McPherson. She was a, a great woman of God and she was in the turn of the 1900s. And she was so full of the Holy Spirit that when she entered a town, people from miles around would have experiences with God. They talked about people riding their bike and they would fall off their bike and they couldn't get up until they had repented and got right with God. And this was happening and there were wonders and miracles. She was a woman who gave herself to God and she was a woman who was overflowing with the Holy Ghost. She was not only filled, but she was overflowing. You know, we need to know the truth and the Word of God and be filled with the Spirit. I believe this, we need this more than ever right now. I just got to write down a few things I think the Spirit does. Just only probably a few. But we've heard of some of them already. What does the Spirit do? He gives us power. He comforts us. He leads us into all truth. He opens the Word. Alistair says that, that when he got the Holy Spirit, the Word suddenly opened to him like never before. He shows us things to come and we need to see what's coming. He helps us to pray. He builds us up. He gives us boldness. He gives us discernment. He gives us the gifts of the Spirit. He spreads the love of God through us. And as I said, these men of God were praying into their destiny. Ron was talking last week about the move of God, the great move of God that was coming. And I tell you, we need to get ready, church. I believe that with all my heart. We are on the verge of the biggest revival that the world has ever seen. And it's not that far off. 
and I, I like the story. We need to get out into the ocean and have our surfboard ready to catch the next wave. You know, if you're laying on the beach, having a Coke and watching the water, you're going to miss the wave. And this Spirit of God, this thing that's going to happen, this great move of God that we're on the verge of, if you want to be in it, if you want to experience it from the beginning, you want to experience the ride. I don't know about you, but I want to experience the ride of God coming again to His church, what He's promising. I want to be there. And so we need to be out in the water. We need to have our surfboard ready. We need to be all in. We can't be sitting on the edge watching. When we were traveled in Asia, my husband and I, we traveled in Asia and we found, we went to two different churches that when we got there, they, they were um, shoes at the door and they were there half an hour early and there was not a seat left. You had to go earlier to get a seat. But when we got there, the service wasn't due to start for half an hour, but they were all there standing and they were all talking in tongues. And they weren't just doing a little kadamashi. They were really shouting out a kahana masatai. And they were shouting out. And guess what? Both those churches where they were doing that told the story that they'd had the fire brigade come out because of the glory of God that was over the building and the fire that was on the building. And those two churches, they both had that in common, that they were talking in tongues a lot, and they had both seen on their place, on their house on fire, and had the fire brigade out to the church to find it wasn't the fire they were thinking it was. And in the days of Isuzu Street in 1906, when there was a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Los Angeles, the glory of God was so manifest that you could literally go in and you could see it, you could feel it at times, it would go over your head. But amazing things happened. And they said at that time, that same fire of God was about 50 feet three. You'll have to interpret that because I'm old school. But that's how far the flames went up into the air when the presence of God was there at its fullest. God, I believe we're on the verge of seeing this again. People all around the world are prophesying that we're gonna have the biggest visitation, the biggest move of God. At that Azusa Street revival, when it was really, the presence of God was really there, a man came in with his arm amputated at his shoulder, and they prayed for him. And as he put forth his arm, or his pit, they all stood and watched as his arm grew out right down to the fingernails. Hi, I want to see miracles like that. I don't know about you, but God is able. And one of the amazing things about that revival was that the people that we used were mostly children. And I believe we're living in a day that we're going to see our children filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And we're going to see them pray for people and their innocence. And they're going to believe God and God's going to move on their behalf. I believe we're really going to see that this time. I've looked at the scripture that I'm just going to read quite a few times and never really understood it. But I feel, I feel like I've got the answer a bit of it anyway. And it says, Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that is working in us. And the more I've looked at that and the more I've asked the Lord about it, I think what he's saying is, he, he's saying he can do far more. How many of you can think big things that God can do? I've got a great imagination. I can think of lots of things that God would do. But, but he's saying he can do abundantly, exceedingly abundantly above that. But it's all according to the power that worketh in us. How do we get the power? You get the power when the Holy Ghost comes on you and when the Holy Ghost fills you and when the Holy Ghost has, has His way and He can flow through your life, then we're going to see these things start to happen again. I don't know about you, church, but I am exciting, really excited about what's coming. But the one thing I really wanted to get to today is the Holy Spirit teaches us to fight. We entered a spiritual fight when we got saved and we are at warfare each day. Ephesians 6.10 says, For we wrestle, and I like to can stop there, a lot of people don't even bother wrestling, but we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places and against the darkness of this world. We're not fighting each other, church, and we've got to stop it if we are. We're not fighting against China. As we look at the big picture, it, 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 as we look at the big picture, it's a spiritual war that's going on. There's a great war going on. It's, it's all about, all war is about spiritual wickedness and um, righteousness. Is, there's, there's a war with the, with, between God and the devil. That's the real war. Righteousness and sin. Integrity and corruption. Control and freedom. Pride and humility. Love and hate. Generosity and greed. Light and darkness. The war to, today is spiritual. That is why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every nation has good and bad people. Do you know that China, with everything that's happening there, has got more Christians than any other nation of the world. They're estimating that there's 100 million Christians in China. They have lived under persecution, but that church has grown mightily and they are on fire. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Like, like I, I've gone some, some of the nations I've been to, the third world nations, I come back feeling backslidden really when I see how committed and how dedicated they are. And we've got to make up our mind what we're going to do in this hour. 2 Corinthians 10, 14 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but the mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. The weapons of the warfare that we have got are spiritual things. And I believe speaking in tongues is one of those weapons that we can use when we come against the enemy. You've got to fight spirit with spirit. And as the Holy Spirit through us fights the enemy, then we're going to get victory. I know in our own prayer meetings that over the last few months particularly, we are coming and mostly we are just praying in tongues and we are experiencing spiritual warfare as we see this. And I like to say that I believe at this time that we are seeing the spirit, Antichrist spirit rising more and more. In the early 60s when I first got saved, I heard that at the end, we would see a rise of a one world government. We were told that there would be a cashless society. We were told about the mark of the beast, but we really didn't understand a lot of what they were saying or thinking would, how it would happen. But today, um, people in high places are talking about these things quite openly. And I think the Antichrist spirit is moving fast and it's happening. But I want to tell you this that at the same time as that is happening, God is causing the spirit of Elijah to arise. The spirit of Elijah is the spirit of restoration. And church, we're living in a day where God is calling the church to restore the old paths, to go back to their beginning. He's saying he's going to restore what the early church had to the latter day church, what the early church had, but he's going to have it. But we're going to have a double portion at this time. We're going to see um, the Antichrist. You're going to see him. Um, we see the world order. We see everybody, what they're talking about and what they're all planning. And I really believe this is just my thought, but I believe that right now, we're on the verge of a mighty move of God and the enemy is coming in strong, trying to stop it on every way he can. But he's not going to be able to stop it because God is moving. God is moving by His Spirit and God is promising all over the world. Christians are praying like they've never prayed before. All over the world, the prophetic people are prophesying and they are saying we're on the verge of a mighty move of God. And I want to tell you that God is far greater than any devil. God is God is just amazing. He made the earth, the devil is nothing beside him. I was thinking about Joshua and Caleb going into the promised land and I believe that's what God's calling us to do, to go into the promised land and take everything that he's got for the church. Go into the promised land. And Joshua and Caleb, they had a different spirit. They wholly followed the God. And that is what God is calling us to do today. There's no time now for lukewarmness. There's no time now 
for the, for the grey areas. I believe God is saying, are you in or are you out? I think God is saying it's black and it's white. You know, you can sit on the fence for so long, but eventually the fence will ro get rocked and you'll fall off because there's only two sides and you might fall off on the wrong side. But now's the time to rise up and see the hour and the day that we are living in. The devil is not going to have his way straight away. The devil is not going to have his way with a lot of these plans that he has for the next few years because our God is mighty and our God is coming in. I want to tell you that all the giants that are in the land, all those people that have got lots of money and think they can rule the world, all those people, and some of us know who we mean, no, mean. <coughs> but I tell you, they're only like grasshoppers in God's sight because God is God. Our God is mighty. And I don't understand now really the whole story and why, but God wants to use his people. He can do it all. He would come and just work the whole thing out, but he wants to use his people. And for too long, people have been saying, I'm going to leave all this to God. I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting for God. But I believe God's been looking down and saying, I'm waiting for the church to arise. I'm waiting for the church to arise. But it's all coming together. I see the movement around the world. It's all coming together. And we are going to see this church arise filled with the Holy Spirit, overflowing with the Holy Spirit, ministering to people, seeing the sick healed, seeing the dead raised, seeing supernatural signs, wonders and miracles, getting rid of this virus. Hallelujah, I believe that this is where we're at right now. And I don't know about you, but I want to get aboard. I want to be out there waiting for the wave. I don't want to miss it. I want to ride this to the end. God promised that at the end that there would be a double portion of the Spirit. He said that the former and the latter rain would flow together. In the early church, the former church, the rain used to fall. I just got my notes here. The rain used to fall in the old days, in the autumn. In the autumn? Yeah, I think so. But then in the summertime, the latter rain. And the latter rain that came in the summertime as the time of harvest, and that's the time that we're living with. We're living in the latter days when the latter rain is going to fall. Praise God. It's a wonderful time to be alive. I don't know about you, but I want to be here. I'm so grateful to the Lord that he's left, kept me here to see what's going to happen. And church, I don't know if, I have, if I've communicated well with you. I feel like I haven't in some ways. But I just hope that I've been able to stir you a little bit. Whose side are you on? Even as Elijah said, he said, if you're on God's side, follow God. But if you're on Baal's side, follow Baal. Make up your mind. And I believe that's what he's saying. If we're not, if we're lukewarm, he's going to spew us out of our mouth. But God, we don't want to be like that people. We want to be a church. We want to be a people that know their God strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you for this morning, Lord, and I thank you for the word of God. God, I just pray, Lord, that this word, in spite of me, Lord, that this word would penetrate hearts, Lord, that people would desire to be filled with the Spirit, that people would desire to live holy for God and to follow after Him, that they would seek first the kingdom of God. God, I pray, if anybody's listening online or I think everyone's online. <laughs> if anyone's online and, you, um, and you've never known Jesus, but you can see that God is good and you can see that he's got much for his church and you would like to ask him to be your saviour, you'd like to repent of your sin and you'd like to change your lifestyle and you'd like to be a candidate to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Could you just... Give us a call and let us know that you want to do that and, and we will certainly look you up and help you and give you a Bible. On the other hand, if you have never been filled with the Holy Spirit but you want to, then just reach out even now. Touch your television and ask God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. If you're leaking and you've only 
not really full, you've just got a trickle in the bottom. You touch the TV and ask the Lord to fill you. If you need any help, just give us a call and we will be very pleased to help you. Hallelujah. And if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you are overflowing, start praying for the others that are in our group so that they too will get to know the Lord. I thank you for this time of sharing. And I pray that we'll be back together in normal again in a few days. Amen. Oh, thank you, Grandma. That was a great, great word this morning. Really appreciate it. That was awesome. Uh, the being filled with the Spirit. Uh, it was really an encouraging word. I really enjoyed it. Um, definitely going to be speaking in tongues a lot more because the benefits are, are huge. Um, so I just want to reinforce what Grandma was saying, that if anyone online uh, haven't given their lives to Jesus or want to do that, please contact us. Either send us an email or visit our website and and you can follow the the, dis, the, <clears throat> the, the process there. Uh, and if you want to be filled with the Spirit, you need someone to help pray with you, please contact us. Do the same thing. Send us an email uh, and we'll be in touch and be able to, to pray with you because being filled with the Spirit is a, a big step and um, it will help empower you and it'll make the Scriptures come alive and you will definitely uh, be encouraged by doing that and building yourself up by speaking in tongues. Well, that's all we have today. Uh, we'll just close in prayer and we'll be looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for everyone, Lord, that was watching online. We just pray, Lord God, that they will feel your love, Lord God, that they will be uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that they will be encouraged to speak in tongues, Lord, and to be bold before you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this COVID situation, Lord God, to be uh, completely ended, Lord God. And we just pray in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. We'll see you next week. <laughs>